If you have a box of this in your pantry, hook me up with a thumbs up and let's get started cooking some delicious, the best ever, Bisquick based recipes in today's video. Let's get started. You know, I got that on clearance. Look at that, two dollars. Heck yeah. We are making Bisquick's breakfast casserole. It doesn't use very many ingredients and comes together really, really quickly. And we will kick it off by browning this one pound of ground pork sausage. I just picked up the Walmart brand and this is a great price these days in the days of higher prices. This is only $1.98 for this one pound of sausage, which is the best price I've seen anywhere in a long time. Meat masher, courtesy of the Dollar Tree. You will love how easy this is to come together. I have my one pound of cooked sausage going into a greased nine by 13 pan. While we are making the famous Bisquick sausage balls in this video, this is an easier take on it. It doesn't take nearly as long, uh, but it is a lot of the same ingredients. So here's our sausage, set that, set that to the side and bring in a cup and a half of Bisquick mix to which I will add two cups of milk, four eggs of your choice, a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese, salt and pepper to taste. I will not add very much salt because there's a lot of salty ingredients in here, but definitely some fresh pepper. A grazie. And this one's totally optional, but I'm gonna add a little bit of Cholula just for funsies. You can also add maple syrup if you wanna do like a sweet sausage kind of flavor and mix that up. I think in this case, a real whisk would be better. Bring your sausage back to the party and this Bisquick mixture will just be poured right on the top. Look how easy this is. Make sure I get all that cheese. And I will bake this at a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes, just until all of this is finished. Bon appetit. A lot of the times when I'm cooking in the kitchen, doing household chores, or waiting for my Bisquick meals to finish baking in the oven, I love to watch TV. I'm a huge fan of streaming services, and if you feel like you're tired of some of them, or you've seen everything that is on them, I'm here to offer you a different option today. Acorn TV has hundreds of exclusive shows from around the world, including award-winning mysteries, dramas, comedies, histories, and so much more. Of course, it works on all of your favorite devices. You can download the app, you can watch online with Apple and Android devices, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, Roku, smart TVs, etc., etc. You can get thousands of hours of content, and that's a lot of content, my friends, on Acorn TV for a fraction of the cost of most streaming services. It is only $6.99 a month. But wait, there's more. If you use my link down below, they will give you a deal if you wanna try it out. You can try Acorn TV for free for 30 days. All you have to do is go to acorn.tv and use the code FFM. It is case sensitive, that has to be lowercase. I will have that down in the doobly-doo as well. Need some tips on what to watch? Well, I am here to help you out, my friends. Good Karma Hospital is an Acorn TV original. The fierce and passionate Dr. Lydia is forced to confront her complex past and must handle some home truths to save Greg from deportation and perhaps even their future together. Bum, bum, bum. I can't give it away. Just go to acorn.tv, use the code FFM, lowercase please, doggy swiggy toy. <laughs> and you can go check it out for yourself. A couple of the shows that I've really enjoyed in the past are Deadwater Fell with David Tennant, who I'm obsessed with, by the way, Anna Karenina, The Heart Guy, and my mom was obsessed with A Place to Call Home. So go try it out, tell me what you think down below, and let's get back to uh, seeing how these Bisquick recipes are gonna finish out. Now, if you're making a pineapple upside down cake, you have to do it in a cast iron pan. It is the only way. And to start off, I will take this stick of butter and we'll put half of it, uh, maybe a little more than half, in the bottom of this pan like this. I'm gonna stick it in a 350 degree oven just for a few minutes so this can melt and get all over the bottom of this pan and my pan can heat up. Once the butter is melted, it's time to drizzle some brown sugar and put our pineapple slices on. 
Now we'll mix up the actual cake batter, which is a cup and a half of Bisquick mix, a half a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter cup of milk or water. But what I'm gonna do is use this pineapple juice from the can. I mismeasured before, quarter cup right there. One egg, one teaspoon of vanilla, no need to measure that and two tablespoons of oil, which I will also kind of eyeball just a little bit. Using my hand mixer, I'm gonna get in here and mix for about four minutes or so. Okay, batter's done, so this is gonna go all over the top of the pineapple, the butter, and brown sugar. I mean, I'm getting excited just thinking about this. And this will go in a 350 degree oven for a certain amount of time that I have forgotten, so I will check the recipe again. 35 minutes. Of course, you can check it a little bit earlier. 350 degrees, here we go. I'm gonna let my cake sit out for about five to 10 minutes before I try and flip it over, and then I'll let it cool for 30 minutes before serving. It smells amazing. Final thoughts on the Bisquick pineapple upside down cake. It's really dry. For my taste, this is a cake I'm very familiar with because it's my dad's favorite cake, and I would have put a lot more like butter, like juice on the bottom and the cake itself is super, super crumbly. And the flavor in general is quite dry. So I think this one needs some tweaks. As written, not my favorite pineapple upside down cake. All right, off to the next recipe. Click. For my Fiesta chicken skillet, I'm gonna mix up the crust that goes on top first. This is my best quick. I have a cup and a half of this. Into this, I will add two thirds of a cup of milk, three quarters of a cup of cheese. You can use Monterey Jack, cheddar. This is a Mexican blend, one egg, and two tablespoons of diced pickled jalapenos. And mix until well combined. Should have gotten a bigger bowl. Set that to the side and let's move over to the stove. You can use a Dutch oven for this or a cast iron skillet. I'm gonna use this Misen Dutch oven and I'm gonna put some bacon fat in it. But any oil of your choice is fine. About, I don't know, two tablespoons or something like that. We're putting a bunch of chicken in here. I have two large chicken breasts seasoned with salt and pepper and diced that are going in. We'll cook these for about five minutes. It's been five minutes, so in comes one diced onion and two tablespoons of diced pickled jalapenos, because why the heck not? I am feeling supremely lazy, so we'll use this to be minced garlic, the equivalent of two to three cloves or something like that, a teaspoon of chili powder, and cooking is not that serious, guys, so I am definitely eyeballing these. Of course, you can measure if you would like to. I've been cooking for my family for almost 20 years now, so I feel like I can eyeball a teaspoon and a teaspoon of cumin. Let's keep cooking this until the chicken is completely done and the onions are soft. There are a lot of good things going on in this pot. Okay, next up, we have a can of diced tomatoes and a can of black beans. Just throw those suckers right in. So like all my favorite foods right here. Beans, chicken, spices, jalapenos, onions. A little bit of salt. This is to taste, so use, a, let your conscience be your guide. I won't do too much pepper because I added that on the chicken and I went pretty liberally. Okay, burner off. I'm just gonna stir this together real quick and top it with my Bisquick crust mixture, and the whole thing is going in the oven. So when you make this, you definitely need an oven proof, like stove proof and oven proof pan. Any kind of covered Dutch oven like this, or a cast iron pan or skillet that can go in the oven will work. Here comes my topping. I'm just gonna, I mean, it's not a spoon, but I'm kind of spooning it evenly on the top so it'll bake nicely. Then don't forget to top it with like a cup and a half of like a Monterey Jack, a cheddar. Uh, like I said before, I'm using this Mexican blend. It just looks like this. Whatever is available and easy. So there we go. And when you move this to the oven, get hot pads, okay? <laughs> don't wanna burn your hands. Oven's at 400. This is gonna cook for about 15 minutes. Here it is, Bisquick's famous three ingredient only sausage balls. So I have two cups of Bisquick mix right here to which I will add one pound of cooked 
breakfast sausage grease and all. I am gonna stir this just a little bit because my sausage is hot and I'm adding cheese next. I didn't really want the whole thing to melt into a big ball, even though I'm making sausage bowl. Anyway, one pound of grated cheese. And this needs to be like grated by hand, not the baggies of the shredded cheese. They won't come together in the right way. Two tablespoons to a quarter cup of milk. I live in a dry climate, so that's optional, the milk, but I feel like we're just gonna have to do it. Stir all of this together and then we will form balls. Put them on a baking sheet and stick them in the oven. I think I might just have to go in here with my hands, guys. This is like a ridiculously large amount of cheese. <laughs> look more like cheese balls than sausage balls. Okay, that's 24. Still have that. Let's try and cook that differently, see what happens. It's just an experiment. Let's put this in here and mush it down <laughs> and see what it does. 350 degrees for 20 minutes. I just wanna brace you for the conversation that is about to happen. There's so many jokes, so many jokes that could happen right here. My balls melted. <laughs> They deflated. As I was putting this together, I felt like the measurements were off because I'm like, this is a lot of cheese. Let's say the balls settled. <laughs> I just can't, this is so ridiculous. As they cool off, I think they're going to solidify. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> As they cool off, I think they're gonna be fine. Like, I think they're totally gonna be fine. They're gonna taste good, they'll, leave, they'll be good. They're too hot right now. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Final thoughts on the sausage balls. I think I prefer the breakfast casserole, honestly. It was easier to put together. Uh, there were a few more ingredients, but I thought the taste was really, really there. For me and my house, we will skip the sausage balls. Of course, all of the recipes for every Bisquick dish I made. <laughs> It's like every time I talk to the camera, she decides to bark. She doesn't bark the whole rest of the day. I talk to the camera, she barks. Can we let her outside, Andrew? Well, Tyler left the socks on the stairs. <gasps> no, get those. <sighs> that was close. All right, action. Of course, all the recipes will be down below for you, as well as that deal from Acorn TV. So thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.